Hi everyone, I'm Dr. David Wackenfeld, the Chief Scientist at the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, and I'm here with another of our monthly reef condition updates. It's still the winter here on the Great Barrier Reef, so the waters out there are cool, as they would be for this time of year. This image from the Bureau of Meteorology's Reef Temp system shows us that the northern Great Barrier Reef is slightly cooler than average for this time of year, and the southern Great Barrier Reef is slightly warmer. Now, these differences are only very small in terms of anomalies from the average, and these conditions are predicted to uh, continue through into August, so no big deviations from the average temperatures, probably slightly cooler in the north and slightly warmer in the south. This map here is an output from our Eye on the Reef program. This is a program where tourism operators, tourists, marine park rangers and just general members of the public can provide us with information about what is happening out on the Great Barrier Reef. So please download the app or visit our website and contribute to our Eye on the Reef. Now this specific map is actually information from the last two months about crown of thorn starfish outbreaks. We can see that there are a series of reefs here in the middle of the park, in the central park, where we have active outbreaks. But what has particularly concerned us that has emerged over the last couple of months is this new information from the Capricorn Bunker series of reefs and islands. So there's new information about emerging crown of thorn starfish outbreaks in these reefs in the southern part of the Great Barrier Reef. So we have redeployed one of our crown of thorn starfish control vessels to this area in order to focus on controlling crown of thorns at six priority high value reefs in that area. I just want to end this monthly update with a bit of information that was recently released from the Australian Institute of Marine Science Long Term Monitoring Program. So this really is the premier coral reef monitoring program for the Great Barrier Reef and it helps us keep our finger on the pulse of the health of coral communities. So this has been a bit of a mixed bill of health, if you like, for the Great Barrier Reef. If we start looking at the northern Great Barrier Reef, we can see the very steep decline that was caused by the 2016 and 2017 bleaching events. But over the last couple of years, there's actually been the beginnings of a small recovery. Now, that is on its own good news, but obviously it's a very small recovery. As we move further south and we look at the central Great Barrier Reef, we can see that declines there have continued, though not particularly steeply. There was a very steep decline after Cyclone Yazi, but more recently there was some recovery and then of course the impacts of the bleaching. Similarly, in the southern Great Barrier Reef, we see an ongoing decline where, uh, although there was strong recovery after Cyclone Hamish in 2009, more recently there have been declines and that has continued in the southern part of the Great Barrier Reef. So that wraps up our coral health update for the Great Barrier Reef for this month and we'll update you again next month.